The student-centered movement in teaching has influenced me, I would say, on two levels. On the first level um, is how it impacts how I see myself as an instructor, moving away from the sole expert in the room in which students um, essentially engaged in what I call a game of intellectual hide-and-seek. Uh, they would try to guess what I wanted to hear and how I wanted to hear it. And I was complicit in that game um, early on in my teaching, and it really didn't lead to meaningful student engagement or learning. And so I realized when I would started learning more about student-centered teaching that it really required a change in how I approached um, teaching myself. And so moving away from the sole expert into a boundary spanner in which I see myself as a bridge between students' own prior experiences that they bring into the room, the interest they have with the topic, um, and the actual topic itself, the profession that they're preparing for, in this case, teaching. And so what I try to do in that case is orchestrate experiences in which students would actually have legitimate experiences developing their own identity as teachers. And that was facilitated the most through use of simulations in my class and also having field-based experiences where students could actually go out into the field and start seeing themselves in the profession that they were preparing for. The kinds of simulations I use in class um, prepare them for moments in the classroom that we talk about or themes or concepts that we talk about, but that really have an experiential component that you need to experience. So for example, one of the simulations that we use in my class is we talk about how oftentimes teachers will dismiss unexpected ideas. And all of my students don't want to be a, a teacher who's going to dismiss students' ideas out of hand. And they all will say, I don't want to do that, and I won't do that in my teaching. But unless you're confronted with that and really experience it, it's hard to really know what you will do and how you approach those moments. So what I typically do is set up a simulation in which students prepare a little mini lesson, and then I actually plant students in their lesson who are going to say unexpected things. And then they themselves get to monitor and reflect on how well they dealt with those unexpected experiences, what they did well, what they might do diff differently. And so I found that using simulations, having a field-based component in an applied um, profession like teaching really helped bring uh, my course alive and make it much more student-centered. So that was on one level. The other level that really um, I started thinking about in a move to more student-centered teaching is thinking about three things. One is, how could I help my students relate more dire directly with what is being taught, seeing themselves in the content? Now, fortunately, in my class, all the students have gone through some prior schooling experience. So I was able to, um, from the very first day of class, have them start reflecting on their beliefs, assumptions, images of everything that we're going to cover in the class because they don't come in um, as tabula rasa, as blank slates. They have very rich prior understandings and experiences. And so I want to surface those from the first day of class and throughout every um, activity that we do in the class. So one of the first questions I have on any assignment is, what are your prior understandings about this topic? What have been your experiences with motivating students, for example, or grading, and so on? And so I try to situate students right in the center of every learning activity in my class from day one. In addition to connecting them to the subject matter, the other thing I try to do is provide students with some sense of choice or self-directed learning. I think one of the things that's really difficult in moving to student-centered teaching is trying to also let students direct their own learning in many cases. And so ways to do that are providing choices for students on how they um, will approach an assignment or how they will represent their understanding. When we do group activities, I let them choose how they're going to represent the subject matter that they're covering. So for example, they could do a PowerPoint or I've had some students actually bring out a guitar and, and write an original song and deliver the content in that way or come up with a more artistic skit or poem or what have you. And so I think by doing minor modifications to assignments that give students a choice, um, they're much more inclined to feel like they have some ownership and direction in their learning. And finally, I think what's critically important in moving towards student-centered learning is helping students understand that they all have a chance to be successful in the class. And so I try to demonstrate to them that this isn't a class where you're going to be graded as compared to other students. It's really about you making progress on the goals in the class and providing the kind of feedback that helps them know where they are coming in, where they are in relation to the goals, how they're making progress on there, 
um, and so that they themselves can see are they being successful and what does it take to be successful in this class.